three and a half years. To bring home our little boy from Kyrgyzstan, there's been no actionable response from the Department of State. Do you have any response to them for three and a half years telling us that just to wait? I mean, we know that Kyrgyzstan has the Manas Air Force Base, and so the political situation there is very touchy with people, you know, contracts and such things. But is there some way that Megan Taylor has been great? She's been working really hard on that, and the legal department of state. Yeah, I already know with Megan. We were actually there last month. Yeah. Okay. To well, me. I'll, I'll take this because I don't want to leave the office for specifically the problem of state this work. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll call her. I'll make it up to call Megan we'll, tomorrow. We'll double team. Is that what Bobby was suggesting? Uh, and you repeat the issue? Or yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, we're doing an international adoption for one former Soviet Republic. India, China, Russia. Three and a half years ago, we traveled to meet a little boy who was six weeks old. And things didn't go well with bringing him home. The, the courts aren't going well and such things. Um, we've been in touch with the Department of State, with Homeland Security, trying to fill out the correct paperwork to bring him home. Um, last year, uh, Secretary Clinton appointed a special ambassador to children's issues. Her name is Susan Jacobs. Her job, her only job, is to go around the world and to resolve issues, international adoption issues, custody issues, where um, a couple gets married in the U.S. and let's say, for example, the mother is from China and she takes the kids back to China and won't let the dad have any kind of visitation. Well, ours, that's not our issue, but she deals with issues like that. She only deals with children's issues. She came on board about a year ago. Um, we've been trying for three and a half years to work with the Department of State to bring home, there's 65 families in this case. There are four from Kansas, and um, recently we've become more proactive to try to bring these children home. Um, he's only known an orphanage, and the Department of State keeps saying, I'm sorry, you have to wait. You have to wait. We can't, we cannot send to negotiators to the Kyrgyz government to do one, sit here face to face and discuss this. They aren't willing to even send someone. That's what I'm wondering. Why can we ask, can you call Ambassador Jacobs and ask her? We'd be happy to. I mean, we've tried the letters, tried yes. the, the nice approach. Maybe it is time to just pick up the phone and, or go over, request a meeting. Be happy yeah. to do that. Or uh, even with help um, me. Janice Jacobs, her boss, yeah. or you could send a letter directly yeah. to Secretary Clinton. Senator Moran's been great as far as sending letters. Senator Roberts was on conference calls with us in the Department of State. This just isn't happening. I know. I, I, I defy logic. I will try to. Thank you. Much yeah. Could you talk about the FAA situation? Some our county airport has advanced greatly due to their program. Now they're not collecting the tax on their airline tickets. Everything's kind of coming to a halt. What would you like to see? Well, we uh, have to get that resolved. And I thought there was a band aid until this fall, I think, that they got put into place uh, before we left. But obviously, we have to address it. I think that issue, again, like everything in Washington, is the cost. And how much is the federal government willing to subsidize some of the rural airports? And at a time, you know the political situation, you sat on the other side of the uh, bench. Uh, until we get our fiscal house in order, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to subsidize uh, $4,000 a ticket to that, some of these things. So we're going to have a chance to talk about it, but right now all this there is a band-aid. And then we will have further discussions about it. You've had a chance. Is there anybody who hasn't had an opportunity yet? And then we'll come back around. Uh, first of all, I want to go back to the original first question about Social Security. Sure. But what I see going on, the psychological thing that's going on is as soon as there's a question about what, what you will be willing to do, or what Congress is willing to do, or where we're headed with this country, there's an instantaneous attack on somebody. And I think we, I've had enough of it. 
I want the problems fixed. I don't, you know, he, he said you're president. Well, I thought you served under him too. I'm not too sure about that. You, he's, not your your pres he's, he's not your he's president. He's not your president. Are you a citizen I, of this country? Yeah, I okay. thought you meant that I served like well, for him. That I well, no. I, 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 the only people I answer to are in this Okay, state. I'm not quite as stupid as I look, okay. but I understand. Okay. All right? Uh, you threw out a lot of talking points, and which, you know, we can keep those going. But where I get confused when we start talking about health care is why we went so long with no addressing of the issue. But from what I understand about the Obamacare is that there was a lot of enabling going on to avoid uh, uh, doing away with the McCarran Ferguson exemption from the antitrust laws. You may not be able to answer that today. You've got a website, I'll watch for the answer there. But would you, if you aren't aware of that or don't know the details on the McCarran Ferguson Act, that exempted insurance companies from the antitrust laws of the early 1900s. How will we ever get a health care bill if that always is going to play into what we end up with? In other words, we know who has a lot of money in this country and what has driven costs up. And if they're always going to be given special uh, treatment, how will we, as the little guys out here, ever expect to get a health care program? You don't need to answer if you don't want. Now, as far as the Social Security issue, I get real confused because we're talking about around a debate. We're talking about how it's a drain on the, uh, the budget or it creates an increase in the deficit. But I never hear anybody mentioning about it was a long debate that said all the surpluses that I'm a baby boomer. I look around here and I know there has to be at least half of us that are. There were surpluses. And you, you alluded to that. But it was like, well, they were spent and they're gone. But that's not the way I understand the law. The way I understand the law is that uh, U.S. Treasury notes were let to back up the borrowing of that money, and that is to be repaid. That is a government debt. Now, you can check on, I'll send you the website. It's online. I, it's 72 pages long. It's Social Security Facts. It's not Social Security parts and victory, it's Social Security facts, and you can look into that, but that's why I get confused. The next thing is I, that confuses me is that you're talking about tax reform. We can't raise taxes, but we're for tax reform. You have signed the Grover Norquist Pledge, which to me is a violation of the oath that you took when you took office, but that's my opinion. But how can I have faith in you that you will ever address the tax imbalances if you have taken a pledge to a man who represents a group of people that say no taxes no new taxes how can i get comfortable with that idea and i'll okay let's I, again you threw a lot out so i'm not sure i remembered all on the taxes well, I I think, to. <laughs> you, you can remind me what i you're right, what I I have, right i'm 10 years older than you <laughs> Uh, on the on the tax side, maybe misunderstand the, the pledge. Uh, it's not. It's to. It's taken as a whole. Like on the tax reform, there would be no net tax increase. Does that mean there wouldn't be a tax increase on GE? Not necessarily. Do you understand? There's a difference well, between. Have you checked Robert? Make sure that's correct. We have. Thank you very much. And he is on board. Uh, that's why he said he supported the Ryan budget. Uh, so the tax pledge, I think, is sometimes misconstrued. It doesn't tie our hands. It simply is a recognition that when you look at tax revenues throughout history in our nation, they always settle in at about 18% of gross domestic product. Whether the rates are higher or lower, that's about where they settle because uh, the wealthy can plan around it. Uh, but the spending side of the ledger is what is out of whack. It, you, we used to match our revenues with our expenditures. And just like all of you, the federal government uh, wouldn't spend more money than they took in. Well, that went by the wayside decades ago, and now we're at like 20%, 24% of GDP on our spending, and we're only taking in 18%. Can any of you run your household or your business uh, by having that much of a discrepancy in your revenues and in your expenditures? You can't, especially not at a sustainable uh, period of time. So when you chart that out, uh, what we end up is uh, on a trajectory that you cannot increase. And again, most of us 
uh, that have said it's not the tax side of the ledger that's the problem, it's the spending, have agreed to do just that and focus on the spending side. That analogy breaks down though because I never, when I was a young man, I didn't always have the income that I had. But when my bills became higher and we started adding on children and wanting maybe a, an extra car, I had to start looking for a job to pay more. That's called revenue. You're a CPA. You know there's two sides of that balance sheet, and you can increase revenue. It is always about cutting expenses because sometimes you don't have that choice. Thank you. That's perfect. That's why we need fundamental tax reform in a dynamic macroeconomic model. When you put in our tax package, you get a great growth in revenue. And I would be anxious to see that, Lynn. Okay. If, that, if that actually Absolutely. takes care, if that actually takes care of our deficit, that would be fine with me. Not by itself. That's the problem. If you think that doing tax reform by itself is going to take care of the problem, you're mistaken. And I'm a little bit offended at the talking points thing. I'm trying to give you facts. You know, I went to Washington because I was mad at Republicans because they blew it. I was mad at Democrats because they were blowing it. I go there as an outsider, as a Kansan, as somebody who's just trying to do the right thing for the people I represent, as a CPA, as an accountant who understands numbers. I could care less what anybody's talking point says, but says what I'm trying to give you is the facts, and the facts don't lie. The tax revenues are constant throughout history. The spending is going about to go off the chart. We need to address the spending side of the letter, ledger. It took decades to get into this mess. It's going to take a few years to get out of it. If I have anybody criticizing me, it's for not balancing the budget sooner. They want to pull the plug on the 55 and older folks. You know, so I, I have those folks, and there are probably some in this room. What I'm trying to do is a responsible approach to eliminating uh, the national debt and balancing the budget once and for all, and I think we can do that. On the Social Security, uh, we will, or health care, I'm happy to get your name. We'll get you whatever information uh, that you might need on that. What else was on your list? Uh, what else was on your list? Uh, taxes, the mm -hmm. so Obamacare, and the Grover Northwest pledge. Is everybody clear on all of those topics? I have the pledge here. Mm -hmm. Maybe about once we read it. We've got time for two more questions. Okay. Two more questions. Yes. Uh, when Obamacare is implemented, I heard the Congress that they're, they're not subject to that like we are. Is that true? Uh, that's how the Democrat majority wrote it. We threw a fit and they changed it at the last minute, but now the only ones exempt are the president and his cabinet. Sweet. So they are not under it, though we are. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I wanted to hear from a small business Nobody else wants to speak, do they? <laughs> I need a few minutes. Okay. Number one. What business are you in? Telecommunications. Okay. That's another real estate business. The real estate business. All the things we've done with this. I can go through a series of problems we've, we've dealt with in the last two years. All of this has cost people their jobs. All of them. If you think they raise my taxes, I'm not going to raise their cost. You're going to pay them. You're going to pay all of those tax hikes. As a fuel business, we're a fuel consumer, big time. They raise my cost, I'm going to raise your cost. You can have all the taxes you can afford. And that's just put a plan to harm for <coughs> Whether you disagree with me, agree with me, don't like me, it's fine. Call our office. We'd love to talk to you about it. Uh, we'll get you any information you need if that helps clarify the, the, the question at hand. And I just uh, encourage you to stay engaged. You're the closer. Okay. Uh, you finished some talk about flat tax. How do you feel about it? I support the flat tax. Uh, I'm, I asked our chairman to have a hearing on it two weeks ago, and I thought... Governor Huckabee came up and did a nice job laying out the facts for it. And now I'm a realist. I don't think that's going to happen in the near future, but what this tax reform is moving to is something in that direction. Mr. Governor, if you 